Well, hello, I'm Jerry McKee, and welcome to Prime Time. We have got a great show for you today. If you ever lost something and you couldn't find it in this meadow, well, I want to let you talk to a guy here that knows how to find it. And also, if you bought your plantation and or inherited plantation, and you wonder what's underground, well, you know what? Treasures are underground. Now, I did a little video there with an animation that's showing that uh, money grows on trees. But it don't, but it can grow in the ground. And we're going to talk to Randy Riddle and Taylor Riddle, uh, his daughter. He's, she's in training with uh, going out and finding stuff. And I think her dad's a little worried she might find something bigger than he ever found. So they hope so anyway. <laughs> and uh, we're going to switch over to you. There it is. Now it is. All right. If y'all have seen a little audio problem, no difference. That's that button I was telling you about. Yeah. Okay, when I switch, new sound. Now, here we go. All right, here we go. Uh, good. <laughs> uh, now, you'll get a little dirty when you're oh, yeah. out mm -hmm. in the, out di digging, right? Oh, yeah, you don't get dirty. Yeah. Now, you, do, you don't do this just for a complete living. This is like a hobby. Yeah. Just, and just uh, hobby because, uh, tell us a little bit what, what you do. Well, I'm full time, I'm a paramedic here in Union County. Um, been paramedics for since 2011. Been in EMS since 2001. Wow. So that's that's my true call. And, and I found metal detecting. We were actually at, at Myrtle Beach. Saw a guy out there metal detecting on the beach. And I spent like an hour talking to him. And then my wife saw how excited I was, and she bought me my first metal detector. And as it's like a race car, you know, you get that little bug in you, and you oh, just yeah. want to keep going, keep well, going. It's, it's like camera stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you get that bug, yep. and all. Now, I know you see a, a lot of stuff being a paramedic, yes, and sir. because you're on, you're right there when the trauma happens right then. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, some people, I know when they get to the emergency room, of course, there is trauma there, but you have it firsthand. Yes, sir. And we appreciate y'all's work in doing that I because it. it's a... Uh, it's a very difficult, difficult job. And imagine, because it's a small town. You, you see friends, you see people you know, even can people. Mm -hmm. um, I know my brother, uh, he's retired now. He's an emergency room nurse in Roanoke, Virginia. Yeah. And i uh, seen a lot of stuff there. But, uh, you know, it's one thing about small town. Everybody pulls together and do things. And, yep. and, and it's a good community. It, it, it is, yeah. I've interviewed a lot, quite a few uh, officials here in Union. And... Uh, and it seemed like it's, you know, to me, I come from a big town and, mm -hmm. and got here. I was like, wow, this is a small town, especially when I was standing at Walmart and everybody was talking across each other like this. Well, how's your family good like that? And I'm, I'm sitting here in a hurry. I'm sitting here, what is this? Yep. But now I just take my time. Yeah, that's one thing about living in small communities, small counties. I mean, you get to know people personally. Yes, you sure do. You get to know stories and their lives and everything. Now... You said the guy is intrigued with the guy at the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what, what got you just intrigued in it? Just... I was just watching him, and I was like, I've, I've seen a couple things on YouTube and TV, you know. They do all the metal detecting stuff, like the Oak Island and stuff like that. But this person, I actually met somebody on, that was actually doing it, and he actually took time out and talked to me and showed me a couple things. And it was like, that bug was planted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, well... Uh, what is the furthest away you've been? Canada. Canada? Mm -hmm. Did you find any good things there? I found a um, 1942 Canadian nickel out oh. on the beach. So you that on the beach up there? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, over there on Lake Erie. Well, I imagine a lot of your beaches, uh, things where people are gathered, even on rivers and stuff mm -hmm. like that, they, they you can find some stuff. Uh, I know that you have where people come in and say, well, I lost my watch or I lost my ring at the beach, and they can't find it. Somebody's going to find it for the detector, right? Yeah, they're going to try to. Uh, that's one thing, like, with me personally, we offer a service to anybody who needs it. If you need to find keys, um, jewelry, anything you lost, we'll come out and try to find it for free. Wow, that seemed great. Yeah. If we can't find it, you know... We try our best. Yeah. Well, I know some things, <laughs> they start making stuff out of plastic nowadays, mm -hmm. and uh, you lose the plastic, guess what? It's gone, right? Yep. This has got a little metal stuff in it. 
Now, uh, when you uh, go out and look, uh, did you have places that you search? Or, I mean, as far as what was, okay, I'm going to go here next. Uh, where, how do you do that? I mean, I, I know you just can't just show up somebody's yard or something. You do well, a little research. Some people do the work door knocking. I personally don't like door knocking because I don't like being disturbed. <laughs> Right. So I'll, I'll research, and look around, find if I'm the owner, and you know I look on Facebook, and see if they have a Facebook page. I might send a message, say, hey, you know, my name is Andrew Riddle. I'm with Riddle's Relics. You know, tell them a little bit of history about their property, and like, would you allow metal detectors on their property? Okay. Now, do you do a little research on the property before you go? Yes. Sir. Okay. We try to. Yeah, I was going to say, that'd be kind of like somebody coming here. I don't think you can find too much out here. Uh, you let, never know. That's the thing. Let's, 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 well, yes, you're right, because we don't know who traveled these woods before we exactly. butchered them up. And uh, now, when you do your research, are you looking for any particular thing when you're looking for research? I, I know, I say, a dog like the ghost hunting. Mm -hmm. Well, I look for different things that, uh, okay, people say, well, I've seen the ghost here. I know the uh, museum here in Union. Uh, hired me to go out to Cross Key's house mm -hmm. and did a ghost hunt there. And uh, so when doing that group there, I did a little <coughs> research and what they was looking for. So, you know, so it's got to be something that you kind of catches your, your yes. eye. Like, once you get involved in metal detecting hobby, you know, things change. Your views change. So you go down the road, you see an old abandoned house on the side of the road, it's like, ooh. Or see a chimney stack in the middle of the field. There used to be a house there. Mm -hmm. So then you can start looking on, online, trying to find old maps and trying to find, you know, the old top of gold grass that show, you know, the old structures and stuff. And then try to find out who owns it. Because that's one thing, we don't go on property without permission. Right. You know, that's just something that we as metal detectorists, there's a code of ethics that we do. Right. You know, we will not enter property. We try to leave it the same as we found it, if not better, and we take our old trash with us. Because you're bound to find nails, bottles, bottle caps, right. cancel all, and, but we take all that with us. So in, in taking those things with you, uh, that kind of helps clean up their property too, mm -hmm. especially when I know with a nail. Yep. Uh, and and the, with a chimney out in the middle of a field somewhere or another, and, and that intrigues me too when I see that, mm -hmm. because I know at one particular time that was a brand new house built right there. Yep. So they built it there for a reason. Uh, right. And then they had things that fall through the cracks of their floors. Yep. Uh, Just like with the old timey houses, they got the wood plank floors. You know, they weren't on the cement pad like they are now. They were just built on stones with the slabs on top of it. Right. So the thing went down in the ground. You don't know what's underneath there. And plus, you know, yourself. We pull things out of our pocket. Mm -hmm. It might fall out. We might not. Might be change or anything. Yeah. And the same way back then, wasn't it? Oh yeah. And especially like when you know farmland and stuff. Farmers take a hick out of their pocket. May have a coin in there or something falls out. He don't know about it. Find out hundred years later. Well, I know that uh, during the even Revolutionary War and the Civil War and stuff like that, you find a lot of relics from that in this area. Mm -hmm. Even uh, oh yeah. Union County is rich in history. Right. You know, they got a lot of military history. And that's that's what we we like to find, old relics. Do you ever go to Rose Hill? You ever done any over there? Um, I haven't, because that's, cause that's federal property, so you have to try to find, you got to get permission from them. Right. And it's, just, it's hard to actually get permission from federal properties. Oh, okay. I guess it would be the same thing with the... Uh, where the British is when they when you go across going to Clinton, I'm trying to think of the name of that Musgrove. Yeah, Musgrove. Yeah, that's all federal property. Well, wow, looks like it wouldn't mind you doing it if you kind of anything relics like it you find it. Of course, if you can find out who who's in charge, you can talk to them. They may let you on there, but they're gonna be very strict on what you can do. Yeah. Well, I can't do any ghost stories with them too because they. <laughs> Nobody will come. You find a ghost. I said, "Well, okay." Well, I said, "I can't bring them home either." <laughs> well, see you there, Taylor. I can't have ghosts here. <laughs> uh, well, if you can't go to some of the federal lands, I'm wondering if uh, 
some of the state parks. Oh, that's basically the same thing? That's, that's basically the same thing, unless you can talk to the, the park warden. Right. And they may give you permission to go up there and do the metal detecting, but usually with state parks, it's off limits. Okay. Every state is different. You know, you have to look, research your rules and regulations. Oh, okay. Well, that's just like, I guess, on anything that you do, uh, especially state or federal, you got to get their permission. They like, can do it from people's home. They don't want, I don't want somebody looking at me. Who's the guy out here doing this? Yeah. Uh, tell me some of your arrows that you, not, not arrows that you shoot, but in just beginning, what are some of the things that uh, when you first got into it that you've kind of, oh, I should have done it this way or, or found some, because I know that going into something new like that, you're going to find some times where this ain't working right, this is not doing right, and you just kind of have to, to learn those things. Yeah, well, one, one thing, you have to learn your machine. Every machine is different. Every machine sounds different and looks different metals. They, they give out tones, different tones for different kinds of metals. So that's what you have to learn your machine. Okay, so it gives different tone for metals? Mm -hmm. Why so do you get a high tone for like precious metals and low grunts can be iron? Huh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that you could, uh, that it would make, I just figured it would make a noise and just go to dig it. Some, like with her metal detector, it gives you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thumbs up is a good signal. That's going to be your precious metals, your coins, sometimes your nails, bottle caps. Batteries. When it's thumbs down, usually that's in your iron. Foil. Now, now people like to dig the iron. Uh -huh. I, personally, I love finding iron stuff, like old farm implements and stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, I dig everything. When I hear a good repeatable tone, I'll dig it. Well, Taylor, what, what, which one of these is yours? Did you, did you bring yours? Yeah, it's the green one. Let me pick up show there. So, so that's really kind of custom made for you, isn't it? Yeah. It's waterproof. Wow, well, I guess so. If you got out there and it starts raining on you, and it kind of fits you real good too, so so they make them for yeah, kids. Yeah, and this also expands different sizes. Okay. So they make metal things for kids, adults. Cause want, we like to get the kids involved. Right. Get them outside, get away from electronics, and just exactly. Well, you somehow getting away from electronics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. kind of stuck on the face on phone screen. Right. We're out there. You know, as a family, because my wife does it, me and her do it, and I'm one of our best friends. Y'all kind of do a competition? Kind, yeah. yeah. She always wins. No, I don't. <laughs> Taylor, what are some of the things that uh, you enjoy about metal detecting? Mm, just finding the stuff and cut in it. Like he says all the time, it's cool whenever you find like forks and spoons because somebody that died like way back, actually touched it and you're touching a part of history. Right, yeah. And some of those forks and spoons they made back then were forged, it was hard to get. Mm -hmm. Very expensive back then. And some of them are hand forged. And that's, that's the neat ones that we like to find. Right, yeah. So Taylor, what, uh, did your dad show you how to work your detector right there? or? Yeah. Did you pick it up pretty good, I bet. Both. Both. Did you have some trial and errors on it? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, it, it looks like the detector would pick up the metal in the detector because it's metal. Yeah. And but it doesn't, does it? No, because on the bottom of the metal detector, this little ring, ring right here, that's where your detection's at. So okay. it's not going to detect anything on this side. It's all going to be on the flat side, so the part that's on the ground. Okay. So yours doesn't make a sound, or does it? Yep. It does. Oh, it does? Okay. You want to turn on, please? Well, that's a sound. You'll probably find nails here. <laughs> so certain things with this, you, you cannot uh, really get close to. Uh, you get false readings. Yeah. Like fence lines on there, the invisible fence on the ground. Right. Any wires and stuff, and pipes, it'll give them a signal off that. Usually if we find it's a good signal, we'll go off one side or the other 
say if it's long ways, because usually if it's long ways, it's going to be a pipe or underground wire, and then just go on and find something else. So actually, you can just about, like when you call, I think it's 811 to call mm -hmm. them to, for big to see if the pipe's there. Yeah. They probably use basically the same thing, don't they? Yeah. They have a machine they use, basically the same as a metal detector, but it's a little more fancier. A little bit more fancier? <laughs> probably a little bit more expensive. I yeah. know some, some of these can get very expensive. Oh, yeah. Right, what, what is a... Uh, the range, the price range of a good, and what what would be a good detector that you would recommend? Uh, let's say if someone wanted to go into this as a hobby, surely they wouldn't want to buy the most expensive one yeah. going into the hobby. Um, Probably like a Garrett. Every machine is different. They have your beginner machines, and they start getting more advanced. Um, more high tech. Usually, a good metal starting metal detector runs you between maybe. Two two fifty for good size metal metal detector. Um, back in the old days, we used to have the Radio Shack metal detector, ten dollar metal detectors. Right. And, yeah. It did its job. It just found everything, so, but there was no discrimination. It was just you know, okay. There's something there. <laughs> now, what would the difference be uh, in price range? Uh, as far as you had a low price one, is it going to do the same thing as the higher price high tech one? It will do the same thing, but it's, you got more options with the more high tech ones. You got different settings you can put it on for like fields, parks, beaches. So, more expensive you get, the more options you're going to be having. Okay. And more advanced it gets. Now, when you're, um, how, how deep does it search down? I mean, to me, it depends. Uh, yeah, it depends on the soil, um, what kind of metal it is. Um, usually, between six and eight inches, typically, but you know there are sometimes we go down ten inches to find, find stuff. Okay, so it makes a difference if it's sand or if it's mm -hmm. clay or yeah. just grass with dirt over top yeah, of so it. Soil composition plays a big part in. You know. Does it give you an image? No, it doesn't give mm -hmm. you an image. Um, Online it, it does. Yeah, it will give you. See. Yeah, you know, it'll have like a little coin or something for her. It'll have like a little square and it shows how like one square it'll be like one inch and then two squares it'll be two inches or like that. Yeah, okay. all, all dictators will have a general depth gauge on it. That tells you, you know, usually in comments of two inches, like two, four, six, eight. So you basically you can judge how deep down it is. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit off, like I said, in terms of the soil composition and everything. But usually it's within that range. Well, I, was, I was wondering kind of how that you tell how deep to dig. Because to me, I was, in my thoughts now, because I've never done this, oh, well, you have something six foot deep, you know. I'm yeah. here, am I going to dig six foot deep? No, well, most we go down probably about 10 inches, if okay. that. But. When you find something like that, what is a what, what is one of the things that... Uh, Sometimes hindering you from digging in that in that particular spot. Uh, Gravel, um, rock. clay, rocks, roots, glass. Okay. Yeah. Now with the uh, with the rocks, say if you got a layer of rock right here, uh, say it's like three inches, and you got something underneath that, does it detect it? It'll still detect it, but it's going to be hard to get to because of that rock. Okay. Hmm. So, if I mean, if it's just like a little slab, you might be able to work around it, right, and go up from underneath it. So you got a tool belt to carry all these tools. Yes, sir. On? I figured you would have, like, because uh, we in scouts we used to have a shovel like that mm -hmm. that we would uh, uh, carry on the side that folded up, and yeah. you use something similar. Most of those carry, you know, shovel and what's I got one right here. This is our little hand tool we use. Oh, okay. Basically, when we're trying to dig. What we dig, we don't just dig a big hole. Right. We have, there's actually a science behind it. We, what's called a horseshoe plug. We'll cut three sides and leave one side intact with the round. And we'll flip it back. So that way there's no yellow holes in the yard of grass dying. If it's still connected, it's still alive. Oh, okay. So, we, so you go you down deep enough, that's what, probably eight inches or so? About six inches. And the time you dig, dig around it, it's almost like uh, some man wears two pay and the wind blows it. Yeah. You just put it back. <laughs> and back. we have what's called a handheld pinpointer. This helps us 
find him where that because he's had a pinpoint function on him gives you general area where it's going to be at so you know the target's right here you're going to dig around that target dig the pinpointer get a more precise location so you know where to pop it to get the item out okay and like said, we, we always try to you know push the dirt back in and cover the hole so you, there's really no you, little none of evidence of where out there Okay. Now, Taylor, do you carry these things around on you, too? Yeah. Looks like it'll weigh you down. Sometimes <laughs> I lose it. <laughs> well, how many how many hours do you spend, uh, say, on a, just an average on a, on a fine? Uh, Depends on the weather. Yeah. <laughs> During the summertime, just, it's hard for us to be out there all day with the heat. Right. During the summer, we're usually out there maybe three, four hours. And we're spent. But in fall and winter, we go all day. Yeah. We're out there. Now, that's kind of almost like a, I would say, an archaeologist. Yeah. You know, because that, they digging mm -hmm. and they're finding you know, relics and things like that. So it's really kind of based like, like that. Yeah. Hmm. Now, what is the most, your prize? find. You're, you say if you had 1 through 10, what is your 10? Right here. It's, I found this over in Winsboro, South Carolina, which is about, a, about 20 minutes from Columbia, uh -huh. where we had a plantation. We had permission to go metal detect. Kind of show it up towards that camera. Just a little, a little what it was. And we found this. It's an 1863 slave tag from Charleston, South Carolina. And we actually donated this back to the museum in Charleston. Wow. So, now, where did you find that particular? It, it was in Winsboro at a Win plantation. Wow. So that was a tag that they put on slaves. Yes. When slaves came over into South Carolina, all the slaves went to Charleston. And each slave was recorded with a number. Like this one was 491. And they also have the job class they were, they were former sports for. You have like Porter, which is pretty much your freight carriers taking right. the Right. Oh, yeah. What train. was this particular one have on it? This is Porter. Porter. So okay. he, he was busy taking he things off the train, boats, um, cause I mechanics right. did all the, the like road work and stuff. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it is a dark piece of history, but it is a piece of history. Now, when you donate that to them, they. Put accreditation. Yeah, they gave, I gave myself and the property owner credit for it. No, oh, great, great, and they can find these pictures on your Facebook page, right? Yes, sir. Was, it's Riddles Relics on Facebook and also on YouTube, the same handle. Yep. So see there, you can go and uh, on to those pages. Look at some great pictures and look at some video. That's uh, actually showing you how to do some of this stuff too. So that's a that's a that's a great thing. Cause a lot of times, visual is uh, is what I can really see mm -hmm. most of the time. Learn to hands on and visual better than just me talking. <laughs> yeah, but it's a uh, so that was your biggest. Now what is you can borrow a few things here, okay. and um, Taylor, what is one of your biggest finds? My Apollo 13 collector's coin. Apollo 13? Yeah, it was, a, it was commissioned, or brought out about 1995. Uh-huh. Given out as a commemorative coin. Oh, okay. And yeah. where'd, where'd you find that? Um, in Ennery. In Ennery. Wow. At a house we had permission for. And that that's one of the days that she beat me on Find Nothing Day. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have Find Nothing Day? <laughs> oh, you don't. He does, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty cool right there. Because that's, that's, that's history. Mm -hmm. And I, I love those coins they give out like that because it was just, you know, it, it marks that date and time yeah. where people forget. Oh, yeah. And it's just like uh, we got Juneteenth coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'll be doing a show there uh, next week, and or this coming Saturday, actually. And it's a lot of history there in just Union County yeah. on uh, even the slaves and mm -hmm. parts there, the 13th that got, I think, hung at the old jailhouse, mm -hmm. and uh, so there's a lot of history there. You ever get over to the jailhouse and out around in there? 
I haven't been out there yet. I'm just wondering. It's, they probably let you. <laughs> just got to find the right person to talk to. Right. But that, that would be pretty cool finding some things there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I imagine some of them might be pretty deep now since it's been covered mm -hmm. over and stuff. That's what you find, and unfortunately, on that. Yes, sir. And now, you got some other relics here. Show us. Okay. I, what I think is pretty cool is that lantern. This is a carbide lantern from a wagon. Um, they used to have a little gas thing, light flame, project out. Right. It's, it's almost like headlights. Yeah. Except for, uh, no, didn't have batteries then. Exactly. It was gas powered. <laughs> yeah. But we found that and Lauren's. Well, that's a good find right there. Mm -hmm. That's because uh, it's not in the best shape, but we still like the history of it. Yeah, and, and you can see what it really is. Mm -hmm. too. And, and what, what else and you got there? Also, got, this right here is a Model T hubcap or radiator cap. So Model T, four Model Ts. You know, I've seen uh, some of the cars back then. We always wondering how come they had hood ornaments. Mm -hmm. But actually, what hood ornaments starting out with is the uh, pressure on, on the radiators yep. that they used. And yeah, it, it came more of as aesthetic than right. functional. <laughs> right. So that, that, that's pretty neat there. That must come off of a way, or how do you, let me ask you this. When you find a find like this right here, to me, let's see a second here. To me, I would look at this right here. I says, well, that was part of a cow. Yeah, you know, but we do a lot of research. Once after we find something, we'll, uh -huh. go, we'll go online and just Google it and try to find out what it is. That's that's one of the I find fun part is the research. After you find something, you try to find out what it is, where it came from, how old it is, and that's where the great internet comes in. Mm -hmm. Google. Cool. <laughs> do you ever uh, take any out up to the museum and see if they happen to? Seen it, or maybe one of them. I've seen a couple of things and see if they can identify it. And you know, they weren't, they couldn't even find identify it other than it was a piece, it was a token, an uh, advertisement token. But it was so eat up, you can't really tell what, what it was for. What it's for. Yeah, and that's an unfortunate thing because the weather has something mm -hmm. that it will do. If that sun's in your eyes, I can tell you. Okay. Yeah, I have, my eyes are watering. Oh, allergies. Yeah. We all have those, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And here I'll stick you outside in all this. <laughs> How do, do you sneeze when you go around doing your metal detecting? Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do that for getting around hay and horses. Now, you got a couple of things. you got a round ball right there. Uh, let's see. This one? Uh, back here. No, this one right here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this is a clay marble. So this probably from the 30s, 40s. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, like the marbles you shoot? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's made out of clay. So I actually found this on the surface of a home site we were digging. Okay. Now, did, yeah. uh, you know, of course, marbles changed because I imagine those clay marbles wouldn't last too long. Yeah. That's a, a lot of things you can't find them anymore because they're deteriorated. From the weather, right? And being in the ground, it's not like regular marbles got now. That, yeah. uh, but of course, you got a lot of kids who don't even know how to play marbles. The glass marbles now. Yeah, that's right. You know how to play marbles, Taylor? Mm -hmm. We used to draw a circle. And we carry a big bag of marbles, and sometimes I'd have a what they call a steely, which is like a round bearing. And they didn't like too many people have steelies in because they hit hard. Mm -hmm. And you sit there and you put your marbles in, and you got can't cross the line. You have to shoot them like that. And the marbles you knock out of that circle is yours. Or from the other opponent, anyway. And the, the only, last one you get, it the wins. The only thing that I know that's close to that is where you take, mar like, these stone round thingies. And you drop one in, and then you put, and then if it's, like, there, and that's the other person's home, then it's, you take one out of their home, and you keep yours in there. That's, if you twist that around, put marbles in there, you got it. And see what else you got? It looks like a bullet. Yeah, this is a Civil War musket bullet. Um, this one was not dug. This one was one in a contest. But I've not yet found a dug one that I've dug yet. Right. 
but that's a big bullet. Mm -hmm. And we, we look at our guns now. Yeah, look you look at, at the bullets now, they're like little, but yeah, these musket bullets, you know, but that does some damage. And that's the case it was in. So that would actually sit down in here and you fire it. Now, did the bullet, other one, did the bullets then have the powder in them, or do you have to just to put the powder Some, in them to fire them? The old, like the old Civil War, they just pack down the black musket balls, put the little balls in, cock it, fire like that. These had the powder, powder in them. Oh, so okay. When so, you strike so, it. So that, they would get a little bit more modern mm -hmm. then. Yeah. Because I know they usually... They pack, pack the powder down mm -hmm. in it and then put the bullet down in and all that stuff. That wad, yeah. That color wad. The wad, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, you got a, a sheaf. Yeah. This here is a World War I bayonet scabbard. So they will put on the belt and your scabbard, so your hand is hit inside it. Okay. So when you get down, you put it on your gun. And we found that same place where we found slave tag. Oh. What? Or same area. Yeah. And that's a World War One. Yeah. Man, you wouldn't think you'd find something like that there because, of course, we have a lot of, a lot of soldiers and a lot of veterans. In and out, and the property is adjacent to the old depot. So a lot of people came in and out of the whole train depot. Yeah. Super that would be a good find when you go into uh, some of the uh, depots. I was watching, making sure it's not the, I might have changed some lens a little bit. Uh, that you're going into some of these places where a lot of travels, like depots mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, even uh, the Cross Keys house, you know, they used to stop there a lot. Yeah. And I can imagine, what? I don't know if you've ever been down yeah. there or not. We talked to the museum, and they're the ones that own it right now. Right. And we're in, we just, we talked to them, and they don't allow it as of right now. But. Well, that's, uh, you know, I had to tone that down a little yeah. bit there. <laughs> so you'll see me get up and down a little bit. Uh, it kind of looks like I would want you to go there and anything you find like it, they could put in the museum. So a lot of people, you know, like you see on TV, you know, dig holes and not find stuff. It gives us bad name. You know, people that oh, they just, don't understand how we do it. It's not just us coming up digging holes and you know, selling everything we find. Right. Um, a lot of people don't understand the that's ethics what, of it. That's what we're yeah. trying to. That, that's where the amateurs come in and, and, and not follow the follow mm -hmm. rules and really kind of uh, kind of messes up for everybody, doesn't it? And a little bit left. <laughs> Could you get it open? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it looked like it'd be some good finds there, and they would want to have like a professional like yourself that has these ethics and things mm -hmm. instead of just anybody just go out there and do it. Uh, they 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 need to, need to do that. Yeah. Listen, I'll talk to them. It's just right now it's just not feasible with them, which yeah. is I mean totally fine. But they know who we are and. Yeah, we like I said, we've been in talks with them. Right. Well, man, you got fields around there too. Mm -hmm. they, and if you find stuff there, I mean, it's uh, get, the key thing is, is getting the owner's permission. Exactly. Uh, you, you got to do that. And in doing that, it's uh, it's just common common courtesy. Yeah. Doing it. Now, you got some other. Yeah. These well, are actually Taylor's finds. She found this at our house when we first moved in. Um, they're actually weedy, wheat pennies. And she got it with her little machine there. And she was all excited about it because she beat me again. Yeah. <laughs> and huh? I was rubbing it in his face like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, would you? Mm -hmm. he, like, he, he does you that way too, don't he? Me? Never. <laughs> <laughs> but the weed scents, um, they were from, I'd say, 1900s, early 1900s up until the 60s. Right. Because every once in a while, I'll find one in some change. Yep. And everybody keeps them. I, I love finding the wee pennies. Yeah. Like I got a whole jar full of wee pennies at the house. <laughs> and you have a whole jar of nails. Mm-hmm. They got nails. I, I, Forged nails? 
Yeah, they have square nails, hand force nails. We also, I love like anything train related. I like railroad spikes. Oh, okay. I love finding railroad spikes. I, when I was a kid, I used to walk the railroad tracks, and uh, that's close to my house. Mm -hmm. And we'd find uh, old spike mm -hmm. nails that, grabbed, that they actually drove in instead of the machine. Yep. And I've always thought that's pretty neat. That you click rocks too. I would never walk on train tracks. I'm too scared. You're not supposed to walk on train tracks. That's good. <laughs> That's good. But you know what? If you walk on them now and the police see you, they give you a ticket. Yeah. And because um, I know somebody in the union that got a ticket mm -hmm. for standing on the railroad tracks. Yeah. You didn't get permission because it's got signs. So exactly. There's no trespassing. A lot of people like to take pictures. Now, I flew my drone down while the train was coming out. It was pretty cool. But I don't walk railroad tracks either. I, I'm no. too scared. No. Nobody should be on train tracks. That's for trains. Yeah. Stand by me. <laughs> yeah, they can't. Uh, train can't stop on the dime. They can't see you because the they train's the so dollar. high. Yeah. What is the most money that you have found? That Quinnsville in Winsboro. Yeah, I had a friend of ours. We mostly her property, and I found a Quinnsville of uh, twenty silver coins. You said seventeen. Seventeen twenty silver. But it was all in one spot. Wow. And it's gold, gold coins? Silver. Silver coins? Mm -hmm. uh, is it like silver dollars? Like silver dimes and quarters. Okay. Mercury dimes. Yeah, so that's kind of hard. I find them once in a while in my change mm -hmm. in the silver dollars, the real silver dollars, not the ones that's got the little mix of copper and stuff yeah. in it. And people used to hide that a little bit. They put it in cans and everywhere mm -hmm. else. And yeah, I haven't they, found one full of money yet, but... <laughs> well, you never know. It, you, you know, people just take and put their, uh, even their dollar bills and mm -hmm. stuff like that, hide it in the can, and they'll go dig it out. To, especially uh, the wives used to do that from the husband. They'd yep. sneak a little bit out and put a little bit back and their egg money or something. And, Rainy day fund. <laughs> yeah, yes, and, and put it back somewhere. Uh, now, you, you said you hadn't never found no dollar bills or anything like that? Not yet. Not yet. Now, you found some buttons. Tell me a little bit about that story about the buttons. All right. Well, I got these buttons right here. And the three small ones were found in North Carolina, up in Mary, North Carolina. Uh huh. And they're, um, I'm not sure if they're original or the reproductions, but they're Haitian um, buttons, which was a group that, during the Civil War, Revolutionary War, came from British, Germany, to fight the, on our side. Mm hmm. And this big one here, my wife found in Entry, it's the same design. So, is that we don't know if it's a reproduction or if it's the real thing. Right. But it's still the, the history of it is what we like. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good cool case you got them in. Yeah. Found these on Amazon. They're really good. They're puncture proof, so you can put knives, whatever you want in them. They won't puncture through them. Wow. That's a Amazon? Yeah. I love Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I do like too. It too much. <laughs> I, I, I look for drunk elephant and stuff. You look for what? Drunk elephant. Drunk elephant? It's skincare. It's good. It's skincare stuff. Oh, skincare. Oh, okay. I was thinking. I was like, oh. why would you be watching? <laughs> why would you be looking for a drunk elephant? Go to the zoo. Skincare ain't my thing. <laughs> I, I have to have skincare. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Also, you you um, put a I, plug in for I also look for makeup on there, so. Oh. And you're... cute dresses for summer. Mm -hmm. you, you probably like Ultra, too, don't you? Yeah. Ulta. Yeah, yeah my, my granddaughters do, too. I like Ulta and Sephora. Well, maybe you'll find something in the ground there, say, this miracle face cream that would just make you glow, and everybody would say, wow, where'd you find that? In the dirt. It could happen. Yeah. Uh, now, you showed me her uh, metal detector. Is yours a little bit more advanced yeah. or? Mine's actually in the shop, so I took my wife's. This is hers, and it's it's just a little more advanced. It's got a little more options to choose different settings, like uh -huh. like I said, field, park, beaches, and you let you choose your sensitivity too. You can turn it up and down depending on soil's composition. Right. So if you're getting too much of a chatter back, you can decrease the sensitivity and try to drone out that chatter. Now, does it pick up any of the ores in the ground? Yes. Okay. Because I figured that might be a, especially if it's got a lot of iron in the mm -hmm. in the soil. Yeah, actually, 
metal detectors here have the all, all metal mode, so if you want, if you're looking for that stuff, you can hit the all metal mode and you're going to get everything. There's nothing going out. Everything you'll hear every sound in the ground. Wow. So now people use that when they're trying to find these old home sites. They right. Start hitting hitting the iron real good. They're like, okay, there's some there was something here before, and they'll start missing settings and try to pinpoint, try to find uh, the stuff. If I didn't make one there, you find oil. Oil, yeah. <laughs> That'd be good in Texas, oh, yeah. see? Yeah. Uh, well, they, they find gold. There's gold options on them. I ain't found no gold yet, but... Me uh, neither. I you wish. You still look. But, but you found silver. <laughs> yeah, you found silver. Now, gold is way up there in price right now. It'd be nice to find mm -hmm. a big bucket of gold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'd be nice. <laughs> and I get wish. All exclusive to it. Yeah. Now, there's a place in uh, Hildebrand, North Carolina. Uh, I did a show and actually walked through the, the houses there. Uh, it's, a, it's a mill, it used to be a mill village. And all the houses are no paint on them. And as you go up there, and when you, especially in the summertime, you're driving through, it's almost like you went like a Wizard of Oz where they went from, uh, black and white to color. Yeah. This is like you're going to color to black and white. And it's got a lot of the old house, old house has got a lot of stuff inside there. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine some stuff there would be really found good because oh, they yeah. had an old store there, a brick store, it's still there. And then, but as you drive through there, it's almost creepy in a way. But the houses on your side, the uh, good hunting games, they filmed there. Okay. And they got a sign up saying that they you know, filmed there and stuff. But I just imagine some of the things that you could find there. Um, probably some of be prop relics where. <laughs> yeah. The TV it's, movie. It's, it's a piece of history. Yes, it, it is. Uh, you, ever, you, you ever found any places like that that you could. Not yet. You might, might want to check them out. Uh, mm -hmm. I know they had it up for sale at one time, the whole shebang. Yeah. And I, uh, I think the guy wanted way, a little bit way too much, in my opinion, for what, what it was. Mm hmm. But that's, that's all it is, just one, you, as you go up and around the hill, you're going to Hildebrand in the back way, North Carolina, which okay. is near Hickory. Okay. And, uh, but I've been, like I said, I went down and did a walk through the houses there mm -hmm. and shot some stuff there, because I just, I just love old stuff yeah. like that. And now, I know that some people have junkyards. Yeah, and then you, you'll find them. <laughs> And that would probably drive us, one of those things crazy. Yeah, but that, but you never know. Yeah, that's one thing. People say, you know, this property's been hunted before. They didn't find anything. All the detectors are different. Right. So, you, no, no property's ever actually hunted out. Right. You always find something. It may not be well, nothing gone, but. <laughs> what are some of the tips that you can give people that's just starting out? What are some of the things that you can tell them that would uh, because sometimes you know when you get a new hobby you get discouraged mm -hmm. uh, and it will happen because you be out there and digging up all these nails and bottle caps and like you know where's the good stuff it takes learning your machine um, watching YouTube videos you know, they got different people who actually do reviews of the machines mm -hmm. so you can actually learn more about your machine and then take it out there and put it hands on and See how it does out there. Well, your machine is a tool, mm -hmm. so you got to use it as that. Yeah. Uh, I know that when people got to have a little bit of patience. Yeah, you uh, do. <laughs> because I can, I can see that you might find nothing all day long. Yeah. Every day, you know. And then you might have days where Taylor finds one where she can go, ha ha. Yeah. She does that all the time. <laughs> yeah. So look what I found. That's it. And my other greatest find that I found was probably my my steel spindle. Yeah, she found a um, stove top, or grate. Uh huh. The, the flapper, old stove. Oh wow, that's uh, she, pretty cool. She was busy cleaning in and, and this, is, this is good exercise too. Mm -hmm. it, get, it gets people outdoors. Yep. And uh, I think they should, you know, maybe have a class for some of the kids that wants to join. Like a club, like yeah. a, like Riddle's Relics Club, uh, to join that and to where I hear the expert like Seth teach them how to do these things mm -hmm. and what they're looking for. Uh, and I, I think that'd be pretty cool. And I think you'd probably get a good response to that. 
Because they would be, and Taylor, you get excited when you find something real good. And I rub it all in his face. Yeah, I know you do that, <laughs> but you yourself get excited, don't you? And see, that's what other kids need to do besides sitting in the home, they get fresh air, mm -hmm. uh, exercise with sun, uh, and, and find some, some cool stuff. And going on adventures like this, uh, whether it be to the beach or even out into a, a field, just yeah. like, even like the university over there. You know, that's they got some history. The, the house behind there was going to once be a uh, the capital of, of South Carolina, and so and then you got Pinckneyville. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been there or not. I ain't been out there. I've I've been looking around, but a lot of that is privately owned. So uh -huh. you got to find the right person and sit down and try to talk to them. Yeah, well, I'm sure you can find the person there. I've seen like that one particular area the museum still owns. That I don't know. Uh, yeah, because I, I did some stuff down there before and did a little checking. Mm -hmm. And we're another one of my ghost hunts. And <laughs> I, I love anything with ghost hunting. <laughs> Paranormal like, stuff. You know, when we go to a property, we'll talk to the owners once we get permission. And we'll, you know, what do you, is there anything that you're particularly looking for? Did you lose something? Mm -hmm. Or, you know. <laughs> Did your parents do something? You know, I, I lost a knife out there four years ago, if you find it great. Right. So anything we find, we always report back to the homeowner, and they, they can keep whatever they want. Oh, okay. And whatever they don't want, we take with us. Now, well, you, well, what if they want the truck? <laughs> well, they and didn't they lose the truck out there. They <laughs> can't keep the truck. No. Nope. They'd, uh, now, uh, say if homeowners, you know, sometimes people lose a ring. Yeah. And they can call you. Yeah. They can message me on Facebook, you know. As myself, I'd do a free charge. Right. I'll come out there and try to find it for you. And you know, some places they have that they actually charge money for them to come out there. We don't do that. We just like we like to be out there, we like to help out. Right. And and that's good because, you know, I've lost stuff out in the grass or something like that, not knowing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, people sometimes will lose a ring because either they've lost some weight or, or something like that, and it kind of fell off the finger. Working in the yard, they didn't know it. Yeah. gardening. <laughs> yes, yes, and, uh, and, and to me, it just you have some wide variety of places around here that, and like I said, this whole county's got history. Mm -hmm. See, a big problem we run into is, you know, people don't understand. Right. No. I think you can come out there with a backhoe and mm -hmm. start digging, digging a big hole, digging and, a hole and stuff. And just running off and selling whatever they find. You know, I don't sell anything I find. Right. Like, my whole house is full of <laughs> relics. Well, that's, that's what your, your, your name, yep. you know. Uh, riddle, riddle Relics. They can Google that, too. Yep. And very easy to find. So we're on Facebook and YouTube. And I think if they look at some of your YouTube channels, uh, your videos there, they'll see how you do it mm -hmm. and what you're looking for and some of your finds there. Uh, that's how I knew that Taylor had mud on her face. Yep. <laughs> She's and, little relics. Yeah. Now, uh, do you have special clothing you wear, or boots, or shoes you recommend people to wear? Or? We old like clothes. old clothes like pants. I don't, I don't like detecting any shorts. Right, because we're out there and just weeds, spiders, yeah, tits. Yeah, that's why I don't. Um, you can buy the snake boots. Right. Like Scott has. Yeah, our buddy Scott, he's the one who comes out there, Madwig. Uh -huh. He's actually Mad working today. Madwig Conceptions. Yes, You can works. find him on Facebook. <laughs> yes, I saw his picture. Yeah, Madwig Concessions, Pop's Place. Yes. They're, they do concessions. That's where my wife and, and I'm hungry are now. Was in Wood, I think where you said it when Woodruff was behind you? Or was mm -hmm. that, yeah. that was in Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence? Yeah. Okay. And he, he, he's one I'm, that goes hunting with me all the time. My wife does sometimes and she'll join. I can't. Yeah, that's a week's loud. I'm not trying to do it. It's okay. <laughs> that, uh, Hungry. If you go take this, I might have a dead chicken out here. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'll find a tag for it. I'm gonna eat it. No, <laughs> I'll, ta I'll I'll cook Momo <laughs> if she don't stop squawking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a chicken that squawks. And we got a bird. A bird. 
And we got chickens. Yeah, these type of birds. I had one that talked. It she's, said, she's, she says a few words. She's a sun she conger. Yeah. Oh, had, yeah, she says that, that she gets on our nerves. I had a graph, an African gray conger. Like and it <laughs> spoke like 60 words mm -hmm. and sing songs. And our our bird likes to dance. Yeah, she does. Oh, okay. <laughs> like a queen cockatoo. Or she, or she yeah, does this. A, it's like on yours. A parrot, pretty much. It's right. a parrot. Or she'll do. You take her hunting with you? Mm -mm. Treasure hunting? She I got took her outside, outside one time and she flew up in the tree, so that was it. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Now, we got about five more minutes. And what is something that. What are you hoping to find when you're out searching? Like, what, what is your goal to find? Me personally, I love finding old relics. You know, whether it be Silverware old forks, knives. Your, your Civil War button. Yeah. Buttons. You know, something that somebody had 100 years ago in their hand and right. they lost it. And now we're bringing that back up and sharing it with everybody. It's like making the person live again mm -hmm. 100 years ago. Yeah. It's, it's very... Uh, difficult to uh, uh, to find something that's going to be that old, mm -hmm. you know. And you got a lot of people don't like antiques and stuff like that. Oh, I love looking at antiques. I got old clocks in here and stuff. And like, we go by an antique store, we have to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you see anything in there that uh, that you found in some of these antique stores? Yeah. That uh, they got a big price on you. Say, wow. Yeah. Found like old clothes irons. We find the old cast iron irons, mm -hmm. and I found a bunch of them, and they're selling them like twenty-three dollars a piece. Wow. Well, that's pretty good then. You can take and uh, see something that gives you an idea what uh, someone wants to buy it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you set up uh, your tent and stuff for your relics, uh, one thing people want to know is probably that do you sell the relics? Yeah, nothing we have is for sale. As far as relics are concerned, because we'll donate it in, like to the museum if there's mm -hmm. something that's significant enough for the museum. Yeah, just like Charles. Man. Yeah. Um, usually we just keep it at the house and display it in, the, in our little room we have. Right. And now when you set it up like that, you're just setting up for display, right? Yeah, I'm saying display, letting people know who we are, what we do, and you know if they have a property they're interested, they can put their name down, email, and I'll send them an email, and we'll start talking. And do you have brochures or cards there? Yeah, I got business it. cards. Um, in the process of getting some more stickers made. Right. right. I'll hand stickers out, cards. It's got all my information. It's got, on the back of it, it has the, the code of ethics. Right. Bye-bye. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I think you should can really consider about uh, having a class. You know, uh, I know they got the explorers there, mm -hmm. and, uh, sheriff's department, and they got other gifts to me. Where kids don't have enough things to do yeah. around this county, uh, it would give them something to really look forward to and excitement. Just like Taylor talked about how her excitement was from finding things. Mm -hmm. uh, I can imagine them doing the same thing. Yeah. And uh, getting with your wife, and of course Taylor could teach some of them also since she's got experience and uh, show them how to do it and find. And I, I think they would really enjoy getting their hands dirty a little bit and mm -hmm. just getting outside doing some stuff. And getting their face all dirty. <laughs> yes, yes, you got to get a dirty face first. And roll around in mud yeah. like a pig. <laughs> no, me and my buddy Scott Madwig, we actually um, part of a meditation group in Greer, South Carolina, um, South Carolina Treasure and Artifact Association. Uh -huh. And we have monthly meetings and you know, we discuss anything metal technically related. Oh, and okay. It's, it's, Bunch of metal sectors that come, come together and just enjoy this sport. Oh, okay. So, and this club is in where? In Greer. In Greer? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. I mean, um, do they bring some of their latest finds? And stuff? Yeah, we, we have a table that's set out that we display our finds and we vote on who has the best find. Right. Get, we'll get a coin. You know. it's, it's fun just seeing what everybody else finds. Wow. And learn a little bit more about it. Right, and that's, that's the fun part, is learning the history of it, uh, about our ancestors and what they had to deal with and live with back then. They didn't have the great stuff that we have now, electric stoves or mm -hmm. microwaves or hair dryers or uh, 
That old wood stove. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember the wood stove. I didn't have one, my grandma did. And Heat up the whole house. She, she would cook up, she'd cook up panda biscuits and everything like that. So, so it, it's kind of a, you know, a strange world, but we lose contact with what life was really was back mm -hmm. then. So, I encourage you to really think about that and yeah, see what they get with some of the leaders, the Boy Scouts, and see if, you know, they'll be interested. Definitely will be. Like ask, if I was a kid, oh yeah, I'd be wanting, I'll be wanting one of those uh, yeah. metal detectors. And they're not going to get rich quick. No, they're definitely not going to get rich quick. <laughs> and they just never know what, what you find. Yeah. And you might, who knows, hit that lucky moment that mm -hmm. one of these guys hit all this treasure, this, all this gold. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice to find a few bars of gold. But <laughs> would be, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be. Well, Randy and Taylor, I appreciate both of y'all coming on, talking about this, because it's interesting. It's history. And uh, it hopefully gives us a chance for people to watch your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. to, to see the videos there you're putting on there, yeah. on how some of your finds and what you're finding, how you're digging, um, and uh, teaching the ethics of coming out and searching a property. Uh, yep. Theirs is okay, but when you go step in others, it's a different ethic. Yep. So I appreciate you both coming, and we're going to just top of the hour. All right. And appreciate Taylor's you guys. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you both for coming. Thank you. Well, I'm Jerry McKee, and uh, you've uh, seen some cool stuff here. And contact Randy Little on YouTube or Facebook. You can see him there, send him a message. Next week, we're going to have uh, Pat Quinn, the DJ from Myrtle Beach that's syndicated around the world. And uh, have a couple call-ins there. We'll have a few people come in. Who knows? But uh, he'll come in via Zoom. And we will see you next Monday. No. I'm sorry. Won't be next Monday. No show next Monday. I'll be on vacation up in Nashville. i got to go find out where Elvis is at. Maybe I can borrow one of the metal detectors and find his bling bling somewhere or another and find Elvis. But it won't be a show next week. I've got forgot about that. My wife is probably in there jumping up and down. You can't do that. But the end, the last Monday of this month, will be Pat Quinn. So we'll be seeing you then. Well, I'm Jeremy McKee. You have a great, great day.